Grenade by Alan Gratz, Part 1, pages 90 to 95. Hideki. A Blessing. A soldier stood silhouetted in the little door to Hideki's family tomb. It was too dark to see if he was Japanese or American, and Hideki fumbled for one of the grenades in his pocket. He just got hold of one when the soldier stepped farther into the tomb. It was a Japanese soldier, a private. Hideki could tell from the single star on his collar. Woto put a hand on Hideki's arm, quietly signaling him to put away his grenade. Welcome to the Kitnashiro family tomb, Private Shinohara, the private said. He scanned the room with the wild urgency of a trapped animal. His uniform was torn and covered in dirt and blood. Somewhere along the way, he'd apparently lost his rifle because all he carried was his sword. Hideki stood at attention. A private was the lowest rank in the Japanese army, but privates still outranked every boy in the Blood and Iron Student Corps. Is there anybody else here? The private demanded. Have you seen any other soldiers from either side? No, sir, Hideki answered, careful to use Japanese. Not since yesterday, but we're expecting a doctor soon. Private Shinohara scoffed. A doctor? <laughs> His eyes fell on the stone bowl with its tiny offering of food, and he pounced on it, scooping out the rice and stuffing it in his mouth. Hey, what are you doing? Stop! Hideki said, forgetting the private's rank. That's an offering! You can't eat that! Hideki's father reached out for him again. Hideki, don't. The private ignored them both and ate the rice. Hideki burned inside. There was nothing he could do. Besides outranking Hideki, the private was bigger and stronger than he was. And the private had a sword. When the private was finished gulping down the rice, he grabbed one of the large urns off of a shelf and moved it near the door. What are you doing? Hideki cried again. This is my family's tomb. This is a sacred place. It's an IJA base now, the private told him. Hideki looked to his father for help. But Oto had his eyes closed and was slumped over to the side again. Where was that doctor? Private Shinohara went to pull another urn from the shelf, and Hideki grabbed his arm and tried to yank him away. The private threw Hideki to the ground and pulled his sword from its scabbard with a shing. It glinted in the dim light from the entrance. Get out, the private roared. This is my hiding place. Get out. This cave is for army personnel only. This tomb belongs to me and my family, Hideki told him. Besides, I'm in the army too. I'm in the Blood and Iron Student Corps. The private looked incredulous. You're not in the real army. You're not even real Japanese. Get out. The private took a swing at Hideki with his sword and Hideki jumped back out of the way. Hideki's blood boiled. He was being attacked by someone from his own side in his own family's tomb. He thought about going for a grenade again. But what was he going to do? Blow up a Japanese soldier and himself and his father and his whole family tomb with him? But they couldn't stay here with Private Shinohara. That man was crazy. Hideki got under his father's shoulder and lifted. Oto moaned in pain, but he stood, putting most of his weight on his son. Hideki steered them toward the door. Anger rose in Hideki like the tide. This was stupid. They shouldn't have to be running from their own family's tomb. But Hideki didn't see that they had any other choice. Private Shinohara kept his sword pointed at them the whole way out, a mad gleam in his eyes. Get out! Get out! he roared. If you Dojin could defend your own stupid island, I wouldn't even be here. Hideki picked up the sack of pictures of the emperor, and he and his father staggered out into the rain. They made it as far as, poss- as, far as a nearby banyan tree before they both collapsed in a heap. Woto cried out again. I'm going to get you a doctor, Hideki said. He stood up to go, but Oto called him back. No, Hideki, don't leave me. But you said someone was on the way. Yes, death is on the way for me, Hideki, his father said. There is no doctor coming. I came back to our family tomb to die. Hideki's insides felt hollow. His father had been lying to him. Hideki had suspected it all along but he hadn't wanted to believe it, and now it was too late. Hideki dropped to his knees and sobbed. No, Oto, no! Don't cry, Hideki. This is a blessing. A blessing? Hideki said. I got to see you again, his father said. 
It was harder and harder for him to breathe. I never thought I'd see any of you again before. Ota's eyes were a million miles away. You're going to be all right, Hideki told him. I'm going to find a doctor. You're going to live. But Hideki's words were empty, and they both knew it. I should have kept our family together, Oto muttered. There was nothing you could have done, Hideki told him. There's nothing any of us could have done. You must find your sister, Oto said. He stopped to cough. Forget this war and those stupid photographs. Find Kimiko and get yourselves to safety. That's all that matters now. You died a hero, Oto, Hideki said. Fighting for Japan, I'll tell everyone. His father laughed. It turned into another painful cough. I, I'm no hero. I was scared. I pissed my pants. I was hit as I was running away. Hideki was stunned. But... But I'm the one who carries Shigatomo's curse, not you. Shigatomo wasn't a coward, Hideki's father said. He was brave, braver than any of us. I understood that now, and I hope one day you will too, before it's too late. Shigatomo brave? Hideki couldn't believe what his father was saying. Woto grabbed Hideki's jacket. His eyes were wide, desperate and pleading. Find your sister. Promise me you'll find her. I promise, Oto, Hideki said, frightened. Yes, good. His father let go of him and slumped back against one of the roots hanging down from the branches of the banyan tree. There are evil spirits all around, Hideki, more than ever. But evil can only run in a straight line. Keep changing course so the evil can't, can't catch. Oto's eyes still glistened, still stared up into the falling rain but his chest stopped rising and falling. His body settled down into the mud. Hideki's father was dead. No, no, Woto, come back! Woto! Hideki sobbed. He lay across his father's chest and cried as he hugged him goodbye. Hideki couldn't carry his father back into the family tomb, not with Private Shinohara there, and he didn't have a shovel to bury him. He would have to leave him here, underneath this banyan tree, and come back later, after the war, and give his father a proper burial. Until then, Hideki would fulfill his father's dying wish and do the thing Oto had failed to do in life. No matter where she was, no matter what she was doing, Hideki would find his sister.